Welcome to Manifested Publishers. Hi everyone and welcome to today's learning session. The subject is advanced portfolio management. We're still on the first topic which is uh, managing individual portfolios and institutional investors. In our last session we began on a section known as investor characteristics. We saw that before an investment manager develops an investment uh, policy, before an investment policy statement is developed by a manager, the investment advisor or manager has to understand the investor. And for the investment advisor to understand an investor, then that investment manager has to um, study the investor's characteristics. We saw that investor characteristics are grouped into two. One, situational profiling and, in, uh, and, and psychological profiling. We defined profiling and say that it refers to the recording and analysis of a person's uh, psychological and behavioral characteristics so as to assess or predict their capabilities in a certain sphere. And uh, profiling is done so as to identify categories of people. So in finance, when we do profiling, we focus on situational profiling and also the psychological profiling. So learners, that's what we learned in our last lesson. And we went further to uh, discuss the uh, situational profiling. Situational profiling. We saw that situational profiling refers to the considering an investor's basic philosophy and preferences while facilitating the discussion of investment risk. And that is done by, uh, by, by anticipating areas of potential concern or areas of special importance to the investor. In situation of profiling, we study the circumstances. Situation of profiling, we, we learned that seeks to uh, anticipate an individual's concerns and also risk tolerance by specifying the investor's one, source of wealth, two, the perceived um, measure of wealth, and three, stages of life. So we discussed in detail source of wealth and perceived measure of uh, wealth of an investor. In our today's lesson, I want us to uh, discuss the third um, point, which is the stage of life. So the subtopic is investor characteristics. Investor characteristics. Investor characteristics. Investor characteristics. Remember learners still under situational profiling. We we still under 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 in, in investor uh, uh, profiling, but now we want to focus on stage of life. Stages of life. Stages of life. And I've said situational profiling helps the managers to understand an investor's motivation based on their source of wealth, based on their measure of wealth, and also stage of life. Stage of life. 
So learners stage of life. As an investment ad ad advisor, you may want to um, consider the stage of life of an individual in order to understand that investor. And in life stage classifications, the investment policy and particularly the risk tolerance are determined by one's progress on the journey from, from childhood to youth, to adulthood, to maturity, to retirement and death. Okay, these are the stages I've mentioned childhood. youth maturity childhood youth maturity um, another stage is retirement and death these are the stages of life we call them life stage classifications so Theoretically, learners, a person's ability to accept risk should begin at a higher level and gradually decline through his lifetime. That is theoretically speaking. Theoretically. Theoretically. A person's ability to accept risk. A person's ability to accept risk. A person's ability to accept to accept risk should begin at a higher level. Should begin at a higher level and then gradually decline, okay? And gradually decline uh, through his lifetime. And gradually decline through his lifetime. Lifetime from childhood to, to death. That is a very important point, learners. But uh, while this is happening, while learners, while the willingness, we know that the willingness to assume uh, risk, the willingness to assume risk uh, should be driven by 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 cash flow considerations, largely by cash flow consideration. The willingness to assume risk is driven largely by uh, cash flow considerations. Cash flow considerations, you are referring to the incomes and, and expenses of an individual. So the, the human financial um, condition learners is driven by additional factors. There are additional factors such as life experiences, the living conditions of an investor, the starting point, the starting point on the scale of wealth. There are other factors like personal abilities, personal ambitions, and so on. That's why I said theoretically. A person's ability to accept risks should begin at a higher level and gradually decline through his lifetime. While willingness to assume risk should be driven largely by cash flow considerations. These are individuals' expenses, individuals' incomes, and so on. 
but we all know that the human financial condition, my financial condition is driven by other factors. There are additional factors like life experiences. We go through different life experiences that either positively or negatively impact on our financial conditions. The living conditions. The starting point of an individual scale of wealth. There are those who start from zero. Okay, you complete your school, you have no inheritance, you have no advantages, you have nothing. It's just your clothes and your shoes. You have that's the only asset that one individual may have. Another one may have stable wealth. So another one may have a starting point of uh, that is that is stable. Maybe an individual has inherited uh, private uh, property or, or land or buildings, commercial houses. So, so those are factors, learners. The human condition is driven by other factors other than just what we are referring to here, the stages of life. Okay? The human financial condition is driven by additional factors. So, but generally learners, an individual's investment policy can be viewed as passing through uh, some general phases. And these phases are one, foundation phase, two, the accumulation phase, three, the maintenance phase, four, the, 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 the distribution phase. So an individual's investment uh, policy, that's a very important point to note down, that an individual's investment policy, an individual's investment an individual's investment policy can be viewed as can be viewed as passing the, just the passing uh, 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 passing uh, I said can be viewed as passing passing through. general faces which are foundation, accumulation, foundation phase, accumulation phase, there is a maintenance phase, Foundation phase, accumulation phase, um, maintenance phase, and then lastly, and distribution. So an individual's investment policy can be viewed as passing through general phases such as the foundation phase, accumulation phase, maintenance phase, and the distribution phase. Now, learners, during the foundation phase, during the foundation phase, and that is the foundation phase of, of, uh, of say, of, uh, of, uh, of life, okay? During the foundation phase of life, during the foundation phase of life, the individual is, uh, is establishing the base from which wealth will be increased. 
or will be created. During this foundation phase, the individual establishes the base from which wealth will be created. And this base may be, say, improving market, marketable say, uh, skills, okay? Establishing a business. Acquiring educational degrees. Acquiring certifications. That is the foundation phase. Studying, taking a professional course. Doing a master's, master's uh, degree. Establishing a business. Incorporating a uh, sole proprietorship. Establishing learners. That is laying the foundation upon which wealth can be created. And during this foundation phase, the individual is usually young. The individual at that point in life is young, okay? And if the individual is young, then that means that that individual has a long time horizon, investment horizon. He has a long time horizon. And at that point, that long time horizon can be associated with above average tolerance of risk. A high average tolerance for risk. If you know you have many years ahead of you, then you can easily take risks now because you have time to recover in case you fail in whatever investments you are making. So during the foundation phase, learners, the individual, number one, is usually young. And if the individual is young, then that means that that individual has a long time horizon, which normally would be associated with the, an above average tolerance for risk. That is foundation phase. And learners, the risk tolerance, the risk tolerance we are talking about uh, in relation to this young uh, investor should be certainly, should be above average if that individual has inherited wealth. If that individual has what? Has inherited wealth. Remember, we had mentioned that we, we do not all start at the same scale of wealth. There are those who may have uh, inherited wealth when they are young, there are those who may not. Okay? Now, lacking such wealth, the foundation phase may be the period when an individual's investable assets are at their lowest and financial uncertainty is at its highest. So do you get the point? An individual, let me repeat, an individual whose risk tolerance is above average at the foundation stage is the individual who has inherited wealth. But the one who lacks this inherited wealth at the foundation phase may not have investable assets. The investable assets are at the lowest. And at the same time, the financial uncertainty is at its highest. So learners, a young entrepreneur may have substantial expenses in establishing a business. 
which results in liquidity need that overrides all other considerations. At that foundation phase, learners, we may have individuals who may uh, be planning to marry. At the same time, we may have the arrival of children. So marriage and arrival of children may also create a desire for more rapid wealth accumulation that is, may not be well matched by either ability or willingness to assume risk. We are now talking about accumulation. You see how the concepts are related, the phases are related. So in the accumulation phase, earnings accelerate as returns accrue from the marketable skills and abilities acquired during the foundation period and also and, and gradually reach their peak. So in the early years of accumulation, in the early years of accumulation phase, income rises and investable assets begin to accumulate. But at the same time, the expenses will rise during this period. And they are rising through other uh, expenses like the uh, establishment of a family, purchases of homes, and uh, care of children, educating children, and so on. So that in the later years of the accumulation period, in the later years of accumulation of wealth, later, we are talking about later years, expenses begin to do what? To decline. And expenses decline because maybe children are through with school, they are through with adulthood, education needs are fulfilled, You've, your children have gone to school, they, they've completed the university, that is at the later age, a period of uh, wealth accumulation. So the expenses go down. But when you are at the early years of wealth accumulation, the expenses increase because of establishment of homes, paying of school, uh, uh, school fees, uh, dowry, uh, establishment of a marriage, and so on. But as, as time goes by through the accumulation phase, these expenses go down. Why? Because uh, the children reach adulthood. The children should be moving away from the home. All the education needs have been met. The, the education needs have been fulfilled. And if you were paying uh, uh, maybe loans for housing or you had taken loan to build houses, you've already completed the home purchases and so on. So at the later stages of wealth accumulation, income generally continues to rise as the individual reaches the uh, reaches peak productivity. At that point, you may have gained experience at the workplace if you are employed, and you've also been promoted because of experience, okay? So if an individual's personal spending habits do not change, because we've, we've, uh, we've seen individuals when their income increases, they also increase their, their, their expenditure. They sh move houses, they change lifestyle, they buy new cars, they buy uh, uh, choppers and all that. So as the income, such individuals, as income increases, they, they, they also increase their living standards. The living standards goes up. But if, if I'm saying, if an individual's personal spending habits do not change, 
then the gap between income and expenses may widen throughout the accumulation phase, allowing for an increase in savings. But there are some individuals who may forego investing. As wealth increases, there are those who don't invest. They don't invest their growing wealth, but instead they increase spending on luxury items. There are those who may not uh, uh, spend money on luxury items, but they may engage in, in giving gifts to relatives, to charities. If they have, the individual has one wife, may marry other two, three wives. So for investors, learners, however, the accumulation, the accumulation uh, phase, the accumulation phase, for those who invest, their accumulation phase is characterized by increased risk tolerance, which is driven by increased wealth and still long-term uh, investment horizon. Okay? Accumulation phase. Now, talking of the maintenance phase. Now, during the... We've moved from accumulation, we are now on maintain, maintenance phase. Now, learners, during the maintenance phase, the individual has moved into later years of life. You are no longer a youth. You're no longer a child. The things you used to do when you were a child, you no longer do. Okay? You completed your education you got employed or you started a business, you married, you paid dowry, you built houses, you've educated your children, your children are out of the home. You've been, say, there are two categories of people here during accumulation. There are those, uh, we say that expenses goes down, then they have investable assets. There are those who invest, there are those who, who waste. It's either you invest or waste. There are those who, who waste. So, 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 learners at the maintenance phase during this period, the individual has moved into later years of life, and usually you find the individual has retired from daily uh, activities, from daily employment or from pressure of owning a business. That individual has no pressure to own a business. He is retired from daily em employment. Now, this phase, learners, the maintenance phase, um, the maintenance phase, learners, the, 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 this phase focuses on, 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 maintaining the desired lifestyle. The maintenance phase focuses on maintaining the desired lifestyle and financial security, two things. The individual has been accumulating wealth, okay? is now appearing in his later years where there is no pressure to uh, start a business, there is no uh, desire of employment, but he had developed a certain lifestyle whose objective at the maintenance phase is to maintain, is to sustain, okay? So I've said, the maintenance phase focuses on, on maintaining the desired lifestyle and that is one, the number two, financial security. 
And that simply means preservation, preserving, preserving the accumulated wealth, preserving the accumulated wealth, the accumulated wealth, preserving. So preserving accumulated wealth begins to do what? To increase in importance. While the, while the, while the growth of wealth may begin to decline in importance. So ultimately, or consequently, risk tolerance will also decline. Because again, the individual's time horizon will begin to shorten. So, but this individual may have confidence in his ability to replace capital or recover from any losses. That is if he intends to invest, okay? So in the maintenance phase, investors will typically reduce exposure to higher volatility assets, like the common stocks, all right? But they will increase exposure to lower volatility investments, such as, uh, such as intermediate term bonds, because learners, uh, the individual now has less time to recover from poor investment results. Is, is very little time because we are talking of an individual who's, who is, who is um, in his later years of life. So he will focus on portfolio stability. Portfolio stability. Portfolio stability will become more important, will be increasingly important to the individual at the maintenance phase. So learners in this phase, in the maintenance phase, the challenge is to achieve a desired level of portfolio stability and maintain an exposure to, uh, to risky assets sufficient to preserve the portfolio's purchasing power. And those investors at this phase will become too conservative. Those will become too conservative. Too soon after retirement, too soon after retirement, may reach an elderly age with assets that have suffered significant decline in purchasing power. Those who maintain on that, because at this stage you've said investors will focus on in, 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 in portfolio stability. Those who are too conservative because they don't want to risk. They may end up uh, as they age, as they age, as they age, they may end up with a portfolio that have uh, deteriorated or declined purchasing power. So that is uh, the danger of uh, uh, becoming too conservative or, or uh, uh, at, this, at, this, at this stage. Now, how about the distribution phase? Now, in the distribution phase, the accumulated wealth is transferred to other persons. The accumulated wealth is distributed to other persons during the distribution phase. Just as the name suggests, distribution is derived from the word distribute. 
in distribution phase, the wealth that has been accumulated and maintained is distributed to other persons. or transferred to other persons or entities. And for many, this phase, learners, for many, the distribution phase begins when the individual is still reaping the benefits of the maintenance phase. Okay? It, it, for many, it may begin while the individual is still enjoying the benefits of the maintenance phase. The maintenance phase and even during retirement. And uh, for most people, the phase involves a conscious decision to begin to transfer wealth especially in the Western culture. In the African culture, it's a bit tricky. Okay? In the Western culture, we have... That happens frequently. But in the African culture, individuals rarely distribute wealth while they are still alive. They don't make any conscious effort or decision to transfer their wealth because I think due to cultural factors sometimes it's not good to to anticipate your death okay that's a discussion for another day but learners at this phase the distribution phase Dealing with tax constraints often becomes an important consideration. A very important consideration. A very important consideration in investment planning, learners, as investors seek to maximize the after tax value of assets that are transferred to others. And although asset distribution begins much earlier than us, although asset uh, distribution, uh, I may say, may take place in the later stages of life, planning for such transfers can be uh, or should begin much earlier. And especially for the individuals who have substantial wealth, individuals with substantial wealth, learners, the distribution um, phase should be a well-planned program executed during the course of several years. Executed during the course of several years and efficient wealth uh, transfers, learners, efficient wealth transfers take advantage of market conditions. They take advantage of tax laws and various transfer mechanisms. So an individual may consider uh, various transfer strategies. He might establish trusts an individual may establish foundations for, for, for their heirs or for charities, okay? So he might establish trust. We've seen individuals who establish trust, those who establish charities, and so on. There are those who may even make outright gifts of assets, outright gifts of cash. There are those who will modify the legal ownership structure of certain assets. There are those who make advanced provision for care 
in the event of health problems and to pay for wealth transfer taxes. So those are, that is the distribution phase. We've said that if an individual has substantial wealth, then the transfer of wealth should start well much earlier. Okay? Should take place much earlier. So learners, these are the uh, phases. We've said an individual's investment policy can be viewed as passing through general phases such as foundation phase, accumulation, maintenance, and distribution. It's important to, however, note that although the progression, although the progression from accumulation to distribution may be linear, that is not necessarily so in real life. I've been explaining as though things are just linear. They take place one after the other. No, that may not be necessarily so. Individuals, learners in accumulation, for example, individuals in accumulation phase may become dissatisfied with their career choice and return to the foundation phase. There are those who may come at this point and they become dissatisfied with their career choices. There are those who may think that they need to do business, establish a business at this level when they are still young, okay? Uh, they, I'm talking about accumulation. At accumulation, when accum we've learned that accumulation takes place when an individual is relatively young. And I've explained as though that happens all the time. No, uh, that is not a linear progression. There are those who at accumulation phase may be dissatisfied with whatever choice they made. And we have many, okay, who change careers in their 40s, in their 50s, they, because they are, dis, they are dissatisfied with their career choice. And they return, not at accumulation, they return to the foundation uh, phase. Take another course, five years. Uh, an individual at accumulation who thought that uh, he, his desire is to uh, practice law, studied 10 years, uh, practiced two years, 12 years. After that, he discovered that his passion is in carpentry. So he goes back to uh, a technical, uh, technical college and begins training as a carpenter foundation and some may be forced to take such a move as demand for their skill diminishes you are this phase foundation phase and you the skills that you studied for in the market have diminished maybe accounting skills or whatever skills that you've taken they are no longer in demand. So someone, some may shift from uh, uh, accumulation phase to foundation phase because of the um, uh, because of the l low demand of uh, their skills. Skill, their skill, the demand for their skill diminishes. There are those who may fall suddenly ill. Or there are some individuals who may en be engaged in accidents. A sudden illness or an accident may move an individual unexpectedly to the distribution phase. An individual may have accumulated a lot of wealth, substantial wealth. So instead of going to maintenance phase, an individual may shift to distribution phase because of sudden illness, where the individual perceives that he may not live long, then he, the individual may move to distribute wealth. So the point I'm making here is, 
although the progression of accumulation, okay, to distribution may seem linear, it is not necessarily so. And I've explained why that may be the case. So learners, uh, that will mark the end of our today's lesson, where we sought to study the stages of life of an investor under the situation of profiling. We've seen why it's important for an investment advisor to study uh, the circumstances of an investor before developing an investment policy statement. It's important to study the stages of life so that you can come up with an appropriate investment policy statement for an individual investor. Remember the broader topic is, is managing individual uh, portfolios and institutional investors. We still under the individual uh, investors. And we've, uh, uh, this will mark the end of the, uh, uh, the first part of investor characteristics, which is situational, situational profiling. In our next lesson, we begin with psychological profiling. Psychological profiling, and we shall see later on that as we move into psychological profiling, that um, is a, a, a whole different process. Okay, under uh, situational profiling, we've been looking at the circumstances. Okay, of the investor. We've been studying the characteristics based on circumstances. The individual source of wealth, the measure of wealth, and stages of life. But under psychological profiling, we'll be looking at other psychological processes by which an individual establishes his or her investment uh, preferences. And we shall learn let, uh, that it's a whole different process that uh, profiles or addresses human behavioral patterns and personality characteristics as opposed to the situations or the circumstances. So on that note, learners, I'm going to give you a revision question. This is your revision, today's revision question. It says, an individual's investment policy can be viewed as passing through general phases, which are foundation, accumulation, maintenance, and distribution. Discuss. So learners, uh, make sure you do the question before coming to our next lesson, where we consider uh, the second part of investor characteristics, which is psychological profiling. Thank you for being attentive, and may God bless you. Bye-bye. <laughs>